with the yo ho ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Mario Kart Super Circuit. In the last video, we beat the extra flower cup, and in this video, it's time for the extra lightning cup. Now, this is a pretty contrasting cup in terms of my preference. We're in Bowser Castle 2 at the moment, which I don't like at all. And the last course in it. I might as well not say. Well, you already read. Yeah, Choco Island 2. I don't really like that either. But course number 2 in this is fun. And course number 3 in this is especially fun. But we're not in there right now. I need to focus on Bowser Castle 2 instead. This is just all kinds of unenjoyable. There's so many walls you can run into, so many pits of lava. Each lap takes quite a long time considering it's an SNES course, and also considering you've got to do five of them. There's actually branching paths in this course, one of which is there just to screw you over. Like, if you make a wrong turn, I'll point out when we're actually there, but yeah. When you make a wrong turn, you'll just go straight into the lava after a bit. We're almost there now, so I'll be able to say it. Yes, if you turn left there, you're doomed. You'll just go straight into the lava. I think that in the original Super Mario Kart, you could use the Super Leaf item, which would basically make your kart jump and cover a bit of distance. I think you could do a little sequence break with it there, and I think they put that jump there for that, well, not a jump, but that pathway there on purpose. But lap four out of five, not got that much longer to go. Yoshi is skidding all over the place. I'm not even power sliding here. And, wow, just drive straight into the center of that. Seriously, Yoshi is skidding all over the place. Why can't you have some modern Mario Kart physics? So one thing I haven't pointed out yet, the music of the SNES Bowser Castle courses is actually the final boss music from Super Mario World. No prizes for guessing who the final boss of that game is then. But yeah, this game does obviously take... Well, not this game, but Super Mario Kart does obviously take after Super Mario World quite a lot. With Donut Planes and the Bowser Castle music. You would expect it to take after Super Mario World, considering that was the only main Mario game on the SNES. 3D Mario games didn't exist. And Super Mario World was the only platformer if you exclude All-Stars. And that doesn't really have... Well, I guess you could take a few things out of Super Mario Bros. 3 and maybe some course based on Super Mario Bros. 2, but you can't do much regarding Super Mario Bros. 1 based courses. But we're here in Mario Circuit 3. This course came back for Mario Kart Wii, where it was actually in the Lightning Cup, which is quite surprising. The Lightning Cup, while it's the third cup out of five in Mario Kart Wii, the Lightning Cup is the last of the Retro Cups in Mario Kart Wii. So, yeah, Mario Circuit 3, this course is in the final cup in the game in Mario Kart Wii. Oh, don't clash! Oh, just kept away from Pete. But yeah, it is obviously harder in Mario Kart Wii. There's a few oil slicks on the floor, and I think they would be in the original Super Mario Kart as well. They're not here in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Yeah, and there's, there's probably some pipes here and there to get in the way. So it is easier in Mario Kart Super Circuit, but still. I guess they were just trying to represent the SNES in the last cup. That's all I can say about it. It's really not that difficult. There's a little shortcut there. I'll point it out again when we get to it next time, but you could probably see that little gap in the wall. You can drive a cart through there. You'll need a mushroom to go over the sand without losing speed, but with Yoshi, I've been finding that I can go off-road a lot in this course, and I can overtake people just by cutting corners. In fact, I'm going to drive through it just for the lulls. It didn't really slow me down much, did it? There's also a boost, an extra boost pad in Mario Kart Wii, and again, I'll point it out when we get there. Why did I mushroom there? I've got no idea. But yeah, the boost pad is near the end. Are we there yet? No. 
Now there's the shortcut again, and the coin. Yeah, here. There's a boost pad there. And it'll send you straight to the... Whoa, I got struck by a blue shell! Is that the first time in this LP I've finally been struck by a blue shell? That means I can finally explain what the item does. Yeah, very infamous item in Mario Kart history. As I have said before, it'll home in on the character in first place and strike them to all oblivion. So overused in modern Mario Kart, but it's a really, really rare item in this game, and that's exactly how it should be. Now, we are in Cooper Beach 1. Now, I've always said that Snowland is my favourite Mario Kart course of all time, and certainly my favourite course in this game, but I'm not so sure. It's either Snowland or this place. Cooper Beach 1 is so cool. It's just a really easy little beach ride. There's just these little spots of sand, spots of water, a nice name named after the Coopers. Laps can take about 12 seconds. Nice music, nice setting. Oh, I just love Cooper Beach so much. It's just a nice relaxing ride. I could do about 14 laps here instead of five. It's just so lovely and it's almost over and that's quite sad. See, I'm lapping everybody, because this really is an easy and short course. It's very easy to lap other characters in it. See if we can lap Mario. Not quite. Well, it's already over. See, that lap took 13 seconds. My best one was 12.93 seconds. It's either that or Snowland that's my favourite course in Mario Kart history. And I look forward to Cooper Beach too. This uses the background of Shy Guy Beach, of course, as you can see with the Shy Guy pirate ship. So after that lovely little course, you're chucked back into Average Land with Choco Land 2. As I've said in the last video, I'm not that big a fan of the Choco Island courses. The last one wasn't too bad, but it's mainly this one that I'm against. It came back for Mario Kart DS, and I can't imagine why they would have picked this out of all the SNES courses to bring back. But yes, the main gimmick is lots of jump pads, which will typically make you miss coins. They won't speed you up at all. And this massive lake of chocolate. Seems nice to eat, apart from the fact that loads of cars have been driving over it. But it's almost inevitable. You can go around it, but it'll slow... It, taking you so far off track, it'll probably slow you down to do that anyway, see? And yeah, that pool of chocolate, while only slightly, it will slow you down. And it will do in Mario Kart DS as well. In Mario Kart DS, you're advised to power slide across that lake of chocolate. And then it supposedly doesn't slow you down. But you can't do that in this game because power sliding is incredibly sharp. And you just go straight into a wall, basically, in this game. So that's quite sad. But hey, Choco Island's... It's still not that long. We're almost done with it. If this were Mario Kart DS, we would be done with it, because it'd only be three laps long. But hey, stop complaining, because it's done. And we don't have to go back in it again. See, it only took 16 or 17 seconds per lap, so... It's fine. That's Choco Island 2 out of the way. Okay, 36 points. Flawless victory! So let's just watch Yoshi clamber up onto the po onto the podium. Luigi came third, Peach came second, and obviously Tail of the Toaster playing as Yoshi came first. So watch as the massive Jeep Jeep flies over us, drops a gold trophy on our heads, and Yoshi poses. Rank B. How many coins did we get? One one eight again. That's two videos in a row where I got one one eight. But, that's it. So in this video we took on the Extra Lightning Cup, and in the next video we'll be taking on the Extra Star Cup. See you then.